Hey guys, this is Tony from freshcatmushrooms.com and I wanted to do a video about making your own lab for growing mushrooms at home. Now growing mushrooms from scratch requires that you have a clean space or sterile environment to do things like agar work, to make grain spawn, or to inoculate fruiting blocks, and this will take some specialized equipment. So I wanted to show you what you do need and some of the things that you don't need in order to have your very own mushroom lab at home. Now most of the stuff that I'm going to talk about today are not 100% necessary. For every piece of equipment, there's always something else that will be a much cheaper alternative that you can use and will probably work uh, just as well. So don't fret and think that you have to run out and get all this equipment right off the bat. The other thing to keep in mind is that your lab really can be set up anywhere. Of course it'd be nice if you had a separate room where you could have clean walls and a clean floor that was positive pressurized with a HEPA filter and all that good stuff. But I've seen labs set up in basements and offices and closets and garages. Uh, pretty much anywhere will work as long as you follow a reasonably good sterile procedure and have a few pieces of equipment, you have a really good chance of having a lab that works and avoiding contamination. Now the cornerstone of any lab is this big piece of equipment behind me. It's the laminar flow hood and it provides a clean stream of air that you can work in front of and you can open agar plates and you can do inoculations without having to worry about airborne contaminants. Laminar flow hoods are super useful for doing all sorts of mycological work and if you're running a small farm or a commercial operation, they're absolutely necessary. That being said, they are pretty expensive whether or not you build your own or buy one from various places online. If you're just a smaller hobby grower or just growing at home, you might not need one and you can instead just use a still air box. A still air box is a tote that you can just cut some holes in front of and put your hands in and do your agar work inside of there to avoid the airborne contaminants that way. But if you plan on doing a lot of inoculations or you plan on growing a lot of mushrooms, then I would highly suggest getting a laminar flow hood. Now of course to put your flow hood on, you're going to want a nice solid table. The best is a stainless steel table or a table that has a nice smooth surface that you can wash down with alcohol to remove all the contaminants before you do any kind of mushroom work. Another nice to have is something like this rack and that just allows you to work with agar plates um, and bring them up directly into the stream of the flow and just makes doing that kind of work a little bit easier. The next thing you're going to want to think about is an autoclave or pressure cooker. You can use this to sterilize your substrates, your grains, and your agar, and even some of your equipment. This is a really critical piece of equipment for growing mushrooms, whether you're growing at home or if you have a commercial operation. But there's a couple different options that can kind of fit your needs. The cheaper option is something like this Presto pressure canner. It can hold up to four large fruiting blocks or ten quart-sized jars of uh, grain and it can sterilize them at 15 psi. These type of pressure cookers just work on top of your stove and maintain the pressure with this weight that rocks back and forth constantly um, once it reaches pressure. The only thing is that this rocker is quite loud and it can be quite annoying especially if you're doing a lot of sterilizing using your home stove so you want to keep that in mind. More expensive option would be something like this All-American Electric Sterilizer. And these things work really well. They don't have to work on your stovetop. Uh, you just plug them into the wall. And the other nice thing is that they don't have a rocker on top, so they're way quieter. They just have this valve that you can release the pressure with when you're done sterilizing. The sterilizer easily gets up to 15 PSI, and you can even go up to 20 PSI, even though you don't need to go that high. 15 is, is plenty. But it, it's large enough to hold six five pound fruiting blocks. So although this one's more expensive, it is built really well and it'll likely last you a very, very long time. Whereas something like this Presto canner, they're definitely cheaper, but they don't last nearly as long and eventually you'll need to replace them. Okay, so that's it for the major pieces of equipment. Let's talk about some of the other things that you need to have a functional mushroom lab at home. The first thing is Petri dishes. So these are the dishes that you use to make agar plates so that you can grow out mushroom cultures or even grow mushrooms from spores. They usually come in a sleeve like this and are pre-sterilized. So in the bag they're sterile and as long as they stay clean when you take them out of the bag, they're ready to go, you don't have to do anything else with them. These particular dishes are plastic and they're one time use only, but they are relatively inexpensive. If you don't want to get petri dishes, you can always just use little mason jars or jam jars and they work pretty well and you can use them over and over again. 
The downside is that usually with the lids on there, it's kind of hard to see what's going on with your mushroom culture on top of your agar. The next thing you need to actually make those agar plates is of course agar. So there's a bunch of different recipes for this. I like to use malt extract yeast agar and there is a video on that if you want to go check that out. Um, but basically it's just a material that solidifies the room temperature and has some nutrition in it and that gives the mushroom culture something to feed on as it's growing through the plate. Now in order to seal those plates you're going to want to consider getting some parafilm. Parafilm is just a stretchy, breathable material that you can wrap around the edges of the agar plate and prevents it from contamination while still allowing the mycelium to breathe. If you don't want to get parafilm, a pretty good replacement is just simple masking tape and it works almost just as well. Now for transferring cultures and inoculating grain spawns, something you really want to consider getting is a simple scalpel. These things are really, really cheap and they work excellent for cutting uh, mushroom mycelium off of the agar plate and dropping it into grain spawn or transferring it onto another plate. The benefit of this is they're super sharp so they have no problem cutting through um, even stuff like reishi or some of the stronger types of mycelium. Uh, but also they're really easy to sterilize so you can sterilize your scalpel before doing the transfer. Usually with these blades you just buy the handle and then you can get a bunch of replacement blades um, when your blade gets dull or when you just want to change it out. So I believe these are the number 11 blades that I found work really well. And again, they're really cheap so you can buy lots of them and, and use as many as you want. Of course, if you don't want to get a scalpel, you can just use a simple knife or uh, any other kind of sharp blade will work just as well. The other critical thing to have in your lab is isopropyl alcohol. And you're going to use this alcohol to wipe down the surface of your table, to wipe down your fruiting blocks before you inoculate them, or your grain jars before you inoculate those. Um, and it just really helps to keep everything clean. But you don't want to just use the bottle that the alcohol comes in. It's way easier if you can find something like this. This is just a little squirt bottle that makes it a lot easier to kind of squirt the alcohol on paper towel to wipe something off or to, to spray it directly on um, something that you want to keep clean. You can also use a spray bottle as well and that's a much more economic way of um, using less alcohol for the same purpose. On the same topic of alcohol, you might want to consider getting an alcohol lamp. So these are really useful for um, having a flame to sterilize your blade while you're doing transfers. If you don't want to use an alcohol lamp, you can also just use a big lighter, but I find it to be you know, a little bit cumbersome to be fumbling around with a lighter while you're trying to do all your other work. Another great thing to have in the lab is nitrile gloves. So your hands, even if you wash them a lot, you're still going to have a lot of contaminants on your fingernails, etc. that could get into your cultures and contaminate um, your work. But if you have these nitrile gloves, it's really easy to stay clean and you can uh, wipe them down with alcohol a lot without drying your hands out either. So I'd highly suggest um, using nitrile gloves. They're super cheap and um, yeah, they're, they're great to use in the lab. Although they're not really specific to the lab, mushroom grow bags are great to have on hand. They work really well obviously for making mushroom fruiting blocks and the reason I wanted to talk about them today because there's different ways that you can seal the top of these bags um, and that makes a difference for what you have in the lab. So to seal these bags after you inoculate them, I like to use an impulse sealer. An impulse sealer is great because it closes off the top of the bag while still leaving lots of room in there for you to mix up your fruiting block and get your grain spawn um, thoroughly dispersed throughout the substrate. Of course, you don't need an impulse sealer. You can seal the bag by just kind of folding up the top and wrapping it in a piece of wire, or even better, uh, using something like a zip tie, which is a lot quicker. If you're dealing with a lot of agar dishes and a lot of liquid cultures, you'll also want to consider getting yourself a mini fridge or a fridge that you can have just for the lab. If you're storing all your cultures in your main fridge at home, it doesn't take long before all your drawers are filled up uh, with mushroom culture. Add to that, there's lots of other stuff in a fridge that might get into your plates and end up contaminating them. Having your own specific fridge that you can leave in the lab is great because you can store lots of cultures and they can be ready for you anytime that you need them. Of course, if you're not storing your cultures for a long period of time, or if you don't need a lot of room, you can easily just put them in your fridge or just even have them on a shelf in a room uh, that's nice and cool. You're also going to want to consider getting yourself a scale. This is helpful for weighing out the agar and weighing out the other ingredients that you're going to put in the agar. Now a simple kitchen scale can work okay, but you want stuff that can pretty accurately measure down to the gram level. So I'm sure there's stuff I missed and there's some other stuff that you might want to include, but basically that's some of the equipment that you're going to need uh, to build your own mushroom lab at home. Of course, there's a million different ways you can do this to fit your needs and your individual situation, but basically all you need to do is come up with a clean and sterile way that you can work with 
mushroom cultures and do other kind of mycological work to grow the mushrooms that you want. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tony from freshcatmushrooms.com and we'll see you next time.